It's a full moon. A dark night where danger seems like it could lurk behind any corner. But the night will not last much longer. Dawn creeps closer, and no one would be still out on the streets this late unless they were looking for trouble, or looking to escape from it. Through the dark streets, a man named David Duncan sneaks through trying to avoid exactly that kind of trouble. It's a work night, and he somehow got talked into staying out this late. But he just wants to make sure his friends get home safe. He props up his two inebriated friends who can barely walk, Caleb and Subu, in hopes of getting them to his car and driving them home before sunrise. The group went out for a few drinks after work, and it seems like certain members had more than a few. Come on, man! One more bar! The bars are closed, man. If you want to go anywhere else, you can designate a taxi to drive you there. You can't leave us alone out here! It's dangerous! <laughs> You're right. There might be drunks out on the street. Or monsters. Hey! Subu's not a drunk. He's a lightweight. The man cannot handle half a strawberry daiquiri. There's one right over there. Ah, come on, Duncan! Pull up your big boy britches and let's party till dawn! That's in about five seconds. It, it just went around back. Look, I appreciate you guys inviting me, but... Of course we invited you! Because you're our friend! And because Chad had to work tonight. And because you have a car! From the alley just around the corner, the three men hear a loud metallic bang! and the sound of a giant animal yelping in pain. David runs as fast as he can, dragging one intoxicated friend with one arm and another slung over his shoulder to see what happened. As he peers around the corner, he sees something he didn't expect. What the? <clears throat> David forgets all about his friends, dropping them on the pavement as he notices a woman in the alley. She's crumpled onto the ground under a dumpster. Her clothes are torn and she's covered in blood. She seems dazed and hurt. He runs over to help. Uh, miss? Miss, are you okay? Huh? What happened? Where am well, I? I think there's been some kind of animal attack. Oh, oh my god, are you okay? Am I okay? I'm okay. The woman looks in horror at Caleb and Subu, who look like dead bodies lying on the street. But they're not hurt. They're just sleepy. Oh no, the... Those two aren't... Th th those two are okay. I'm awesome! Woman starts to panic. David looks her in the eyes and takes her hands. How did I... What did I... Who hey, did I... Hey, everything will be okay. The woman smiles. Thank you. David doesn't return her smile, but looks awkwardly away as he starts taking off his jacket. Uh, what's wrong? Uh, your clothes are kind of, a. Uh... Oh! Julia looks down and for the first time realizes that her torn clothes are barely covering her. David offers his jacket, and she quickly puts it on. So, so really, no one is hurt? No one saw anything? I, I can go home now? No, no, don't, don't go. I need to get, I need to get you help. This, this looks like the aftermath of a horror movie. <laughs> More like a franchise. I'm calling the police. No! Really, like you said, everything is okay. It was an accident. It looks like I ran around the corner and clipped the door on that trash compactor. What were you running from? Did something escape from the zoo? No, nothing escaped from the zoo. What was that yelp? It sounded big, like a, a polar bear or a jaguar or a, a kinkajou or something. I didn't get mauled by a kinkajou. I don't remember what happened last night, and I'd prefer to forget that anything happened at all. I don't remember what happened last night either. You took my shoe. At least let me take you to the hospital. You're bleeding, like, a lot. Uh, that's not my blood. That is. I can't let- I can't leave you alone. Please, let me get you someplace safe. Yeah, there's drunks on the street. Really? I'm- Hmm. <sighs> <sighs> Okay. Maybe just a stitch or two? David, the woman, and the two intoxicated friends have piled into David's car and drive to the hospital. I'm sorry to be such a problem. 
It's not a problem. I'm used to driving people around. You're a good man, Duncan. I'll be the designated driver next time. You can drive? I can drive. Just not legally. <sighs> I was supposed to stay in last night. I don't know how I got out. <laughs> I had a quiet night planned last night, too, but these two talked me out of it. You lost your license, man. It wasn't my fault. 25 is the worst speed limit. You can't go any faster because cops like to wait ahead of you, but if you go any slower, the cars behind you start to honk. Well, I'm glad you were out tonight. Um, Duncan, was it? David. David Duncan. That's Caleb and Subo, and I'm just glad we could help. Problem is, cruise control doesn't kick in until 30, and idling is 20, so you have to keep your eyes on the speedometer instead of the road. You, you drove over two blocks worth of parking meters. But I sure as hell was going 25 at the time. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt your time with your friends. That's really not a problem. You can't drive. You're just mad because it was in your car. Inside the emergency room, David tries to help by filling out the paperwork. Next to him, Caleb and Subu snore. Let's see, you've got a cut on the right side and... Are those bite marks? Oh, those are old. Um, I'm a dog walker. The doctor walks in. So, what's wrong with these three? Well, believe it or not, these two are fine. Relatively speaking. I'm just resting my eyes. But I'm hoping you can tell us what's wrong with this one. And she is? An alluring mystery. Uh, I think she's been attacked by an animal. Julia, and really, I'm fine. It's not a big deal. No big deal? Lady, I'm an ER doctor, and that's freaking me out. I'd hate to find out what you do for a living. She's a dog walker. All right, Julia. Come back here, and we'll get you all patched up. I'll be right here when you get out. Uh, go get your friends home. Well, okay, but if you need anything... Hey, everything will be okay. David watches as the woman, who he now knows is named Julia, walks away with the doctor. Bye. Caleb slowly moseys in. So, one more bar? <laughs> morning. David groggily shuffles through his apartment, barely making it to his bed before he collapses, face first, still wearing his clothes from the night before. Just then, the alarm. (sighs) No time for sleep. It's time to get up. He shuffles right back out where he came from. At Julia's house, she shuffles in but can't even make it past the living room. She collapses face first on the sofa, still wearing a hospital gown and David's bloody jacket. Oh, ow. Julia realizes she needs to be more careful with her stitches. There's no chance of falling asleep now. As David prepares to leave for work, he opens his closet and realizes that his jacket is gone. Julia opens her closet and realizes that a stranger's bloody jacket is there. David runs across town to work with no jacket, freezing. Julia's at work already, walking dogs, carrying the bloody jacket. (laughs) David is in his office, dazed and half asleep. Caleb is awake and chipper. He's used to this sort of morning and has no memory of what happened. Rough night? Julia has dropped by the dry cleaner. The clerk is a little concerned about the blood-soaked jacket. Rough night. David does his work and Julia does hers. David notices a small speck of blood on his shirt. He doesn't look upset about it. Julia sits on a park bench while the dogs play. She looks longingly at the now clean jacket, which she has set on the bench as though David is there with her. She looks unsure, until one of the dogs lifts his leg on the jacket. 
and she looks upset. Hey! Julia heads back in the same dry cleaners with the same jacket, now with yellow stains instead of red. Rough day. David sits alone in the break room and eats a vending machine sandwich. Julia sits alone in her living room and eats a microwavable mac and cheese. Dave goes back to work and feels incredibly bored. He peeks over his shoulder to see if anyone is looking and then opens up an online classified ad site. He hovers over the personal section and clicks on Missed Connections. He starts a new ad and types, I met you last night after a mysterious and unexplained accident. I took you to the hospital. I hope you're okay. I had a great time and wondered if... No, David realized how gross this sounds and backspaces the whole thing. He's sure Julie has no interest in hearing from him again. Over at Julia's apartment, however, she sits on the sofa scrolling the very same site on her laptop. She hovers over community and clicks, lost and found. Her ad reads, you lent me your jacket last night and never got it back. I cleaned all the blood off. If you want to meet up and... Julia stops typing, embarrassed. She backspaces the whole thing. David is about to close his window until he notices another section of the screen. He hovers over services and clicks, pet. He's shocked to see a dog walker ad with Julia's picture. He excited goes to click on reply to this ad but notices the text. This ad is for dog walking services only. David thinks for a second and then does something very dumb. He goes into the search bar and types, for sale, dogs. It's a bright, cheerful day. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and there's not a drop of blood in sight. It's much better than the last time that David and Julia met. But Julia is still nervous as she walks up to the apartment door. She thought that she would never see David again. But out of the blue, he called her up to hire her as his dog walker. She offered to return the jacket she borrowed the night he found her in the alley. There's no backing out now. Luckily, it's all business. She nervously reaches out to the door and knocks. Hi! David answers a little too quickly and eagerly. Here's my dog. Uh, Here's your jacket. As Julia returns the twice cleaned jacket, David presents his brand new French bulldog. It's pretty clear that he has never held the dog before. It's also pretty clear that the dog is not pleased to be there. David looks out at all the dogs, which are patiently waiting for Julia to lead them. You don't use leashes? No. Neither David or Julia know quite what to say. They're both kind of nerds. So what happened with the doctor? So who's this little cutie? This is Bijou, my pride and joy. Is Bijou a boy or a girl? David freezes in panic. He has no idea. Uh... As subtly as he can, David slowly leans Bijou back in his arms and tries to peek. Bijou is very confused by this. As David, who knows nothing about dogs, tries to figure the answer out, Julia realizes his struggle, quickly darts her eyes down, and answers for him. Uh, Bijou's a boy. Bijou's a boy! Well, Bijou meet Elmer, Selena, Giz, and Young Young Tan. Bijou has had quite enough of this, and jumps down to sniff and investigate the other dogs, leaving the two uncomfortable humans to make conversation by their own devices. David takes this opportunity to try and see if he, too, can arrange to spend some time with Julia. So where are you taking them today? Over to the park, behind Main Art. Oh, that's funny. I'm actually going that way myself, so I could... Oh, if you want to walk him yourself, that's probably a good idea. 
Yeah, I, I could. Some bonding time with just the two of you will be good for him. Just... just the two of us? I'll just start tomorrow. Bye. Julia runs away with the dogs. Bye. Later, at work, David's co-workers invade his cubicle, curious to see if his ridiculous plan panned out. Did you ask her out? I didn't have the... Are you being a sissy, Mary? I'm not being a sissy, Mary. Subu! Duncan's being a sissy, Mary! Leave David alone. Thank you, Subu. Meanwhile, in the dog park, Julia doesn't have any co-workers to confide in, so she talks to dogs. I'm not getting too close. I just walk his dog, okay? And he just makes me feel for the first time in my life that everything will be okay. Okay. I'm getting too close, aren't I? The next evening, Julia arrives back at David's house to pick up Biju. Hey. Hey. So how long are you going to be out with the dogs today? Just an hour or so. Oh, cool, because there's a... Uh, this band doing a free show downtown later, and uh, I was thinking that... D don't worry, I'll make sure to get Biju home early so you're not late for the show. Oh, I, I meant... Uh, uh, see you. Julia runs away, and Biju happily follows. Once they're away from David's apartment, Julia confides in the curious French bulldog. No, he wasn't asking me out. Was he asking me out? Yes, I like him. But you know, I couldn't go out with him. He wouldn't ask me out anyway. He must think I'm a crazy person. I mean, I'm walking down the street, talking to a dog. A cute one. David's co-workers want another update. Yes? No. No? Yes. Yes? Yes, the answer is no. Are you two working? Yes. No. The next day, when Julie arrives to pick up Biju, David is sitting on the stoop, more nervous than before. So, how was the show? Oh, I didn't find anyone to go with, so, so I... This is awkward, but you weren't by any chance... Yeah, sorry, I... I sorry if I crossed the line. I, I get it. I'm, I'm just a client. I was going to say feeding your dog chocolate. Uh, why do you ask? They both look at Biju, who is absolutely covered in melted chocolate. Yes, I may have fed my dog some chocolate. Chocolate can kill dogs. So, um... Uh, are you doing anything else this weekend? Me? No, I'm totally free. So, you don't need me to work then? Huh? Oh, uh, I mean... Most people only have me walk their dogs during the week when they're busy. Oh, you meant... I didn't mean... No, so does this mean you're free this weekend? I, I've got to go! Julie runs away again, leaving David standing awkwardly on the steps. But Julie has to run back over to correct one tiny mistake. Uh, I, I forgot your dog. Oh. Julia sits on a bench in the dog park and confides in a chihuahua. Did I just ask him out? I think he thinks I asked him out. I may have just asked him out. And then immediately shot him down when he said yes? Wait, did he say yes? David, on the other hand, confides in Caleb and Subu. Duncan, you big old girl's blouse. Well, hey, you haven't even asked me if I asked her out yet. Did you ask her out? Well, no, but I you think... You big girl's blouse. You are being a bit of a girl's blouse, actually. Stay out of it, Subu. The next day, when Julia knocks, David opens the door and hands over his dog without even a smile. Hey. Hey. None of his attempts to ask Julia out have worked, so he seems to have given up. He shuts the door behind him. Julia realizes that she's upset him. She doesn't want to scare him away. So she yells to him through the door. Hey, do you want to go to the vet with me? You need me to take you to the vet? No, I mean, Bijou should go to the vet. We should take him there. Together. Oh, because of the chocolate thing? It's 
no big thing or anything, but it can hurt to be careful. And it wouldn't hurt to spend a little time together. Just, you know, so your dog doesn't die. It, in a professional capacity, of course. I am a dog walker, so it's entirely appropriate. I'd love to. He's been to the vet before, right? I don't think it's been sick. Uh, has he had all of his vaccinations? Well, I'm no puppy anti-vaxxer, but uh, I've probably got to get him spayed or neutered or autopsied or something anyway, right? Just one of those, and hopefully not the last one. Yeah, maybe it's best if you go with me. Let's go. David and Julia smile and walk away together. Finally, both have an excuse to spend more time together. They're both so happy about it that uh, they forget Pichu. David and Julie are waiting inside the animal hospital. They sit at respectful distances while Bijou nervously eyes a pet carrier with a very upset cat in it. David is once again on clipboard duty as he fills out the appropriate paperwork. He's a little nervous because he knows nothing at all about animals. Fortunately, the first question is name. That's easy. He writes, Bijou. On the second question, however, he's stumped. I want to know Bijou's breed. He stares awkwardly at his pet for a while and then answers simply, Dog? When he gets to sex, he realizes immediately that he has already forgotten if his dog is a boy or girl. Julia catches him trying to peek to find out and takes over. Give me that. She quickly writes, Bijou, English Bulldog, male, and fills in the rest of the information. As she writes furiously, she suddenly realizes that she and David are arm in arm. They both blush and untwist their limbs. They both sit up straight and try to play it cool. Don't be nervous, sweetie. Huh? David's a little taken aback that Julia has just called him Sweetie, but quickly realizes she was talking to the dog. Just a little bit is okay, but we just have to make sure it doesn't become a regular thing. Or you could get hurt. And as much as I want you to be happy, I'd never forgive myself if something happened to you. I know what it's like to want something you know you can't have. Me too. David realizes that he too can say what he wants to say, if he says it to Biju. Oh, I mean, everything will be okay. I just want to take good care of you. You're such a sweet boy. I wish you could be mine. I wish I knew what you were thinking. He's just scared. He can see where we're headed, and he knows it's a scary place for his kind. There's no reason to be scared. I'll protect you. Maybe he's not the one who needs to be protected. Wait, what? Look, this place is very professional. As long as it stays that way, you'll be fine. Oh, all business, huh? I'm glad we came, though. Me too. That cat is loud. Yeah, he's really projecting. The veterinarian has just walked up. Dr. Thompson? This is Biju. Mom and Dad, you can follow me to the back. Oh. We're not, We're not a... Uh, I she, walk walks his dog. A, she walks my dog. This is actually our first... Well, it's the first time we've been out together. Except that one night. Nothing happened. Yeah. On second thought, why don't you two wait out here? I think maybe you need some alone time. Dr. Thompson walks away, whispering to Biju as she goes. Oh, okay, just let us know the diagnosis. I diagnose a little heartache. Huh? Heartworm. My dog has heartworm? I'll check him out. Is there always this much sexual tension? What? Hypertension. Whatever, just wait here. She disappears. David and Julia are left alone in the waiting room, and they realize they're really enjoying one another's company. David and Julia's relationship was strained at first, but now that they've started spending time together, all bets are off. Over the course of a rom-com, coming together montage, they take their dog walker client relationship to friendship, and maybe even something more. I can't help wondering about all the mistakes Let's dream of invention.
they walk away from the vet, they happily chat and laugh. That's not to say they don't still look for dog-based excuses to spend time together. The next day, David invites Julia to the pet store to help him pick out some dog toys that Biju might like. Biju is very excited about that. Later on, Julia suggests they go to the pet salon. Biju is a little less enthused about that one. The day after that, when Julia comes over to walk the dogs, David is no longer uncomfortable. He's outside with his jacket on, ready to walk with them. In the dog park, David and Julia sit on opposite sides of the bench, but can't keep their eyes off one another. Biju sits in the middle, concerned. They go shopping together for dog collars and leashes. They take dog walks in the park together. They go shopping for giant oversized bags of dog food. The next day on the dog park bench, they're sitting on the same side of the bench, coyly not making eye contact, but blushing. Biju is still in the middle, but now he's squished as the lovebirds inch closer and closer. David joins her on the dog walk every single day. Days and days pass. When Julia walks up to David's house, Biju urgently squishes his face up to the window, excitedly whining in anticipation of his daily walk with Julia. In the next window, David does the same. Now, as they walk together, they're so wrapped up in one another that they stop to chat and laugh while the dogs impatiently wait for them to start keeping up. David and Julia now sit right next to one another on the bench. There's no longer any room for Biju at all, who's stuck sitting on the cold ground. still a little nervous about this arrangement, and she assures her canine friends, Calm down, he's just a friend. David has to deal with Caleb's friendly ribbing and lets him know, She's just a friend, calm down. But days later, their bond over Biju has turned into something else. As they walk and talk, they don't even notice that Biju and his tiny legs are struggling to catch up. They look only at one another as Biju is tied up outside the restaurant they eat lunch at. Downtown, they barely realize that Biju is somewhere else entirely. And finally, they leave the dog at home as they head out to spend some time all by themselves. They go to movies. They go to tea houses. They share inside jokes. They enjoy cupcakes at the bakery. They're so close, but they both have secrets. David tells Caleb, No, things are going well. If I tell her, it'll just weird her out. And Julia tells the dogs, I like what we have. If I tell him, it will just scare him off. At first, when Julia falls asleep in his car, she leans against the window. But later at a cafe, she accidentally falls asleep leaning toward him. In the park, she purposely leans on David. They both smile. And in the dark of a movie theater, when no one's looking, Julia puts her head on David's shoulder and hugs his arm. But this time, they're so comfortable that it's not even a big deal anymore. With a look of determination, David tells himself, I'm going to tell her. With a look of fear, Julia tells herself, I have to tell him. It's a crescent moon. David is just dropping Julia off at her apartment after their latest night out on the town. Well, um, this is my place. Good night. As Julia stands on the porch and David stands down on the bottom step, he leans in for the most awkward friend hug he possibly can. He gives her a pat on the back from a respectful distance. Julia pulls him in for a real hug. As they separate, they both know it's time to spill their secrets. I have, I have to, to tell you tell something. You something. Uh, I did. Uh, yeah, me too. Well, well, I... Should I... No, just just go ahead and... Do you, do you want to? I love you. I'm a werewolf. What? Uh... Really? What? Seriously? Well, that explains... Well, so that's why... Are you freaked out? No, I'm... I'm, I'm a little freaked out that I'm not freaked out. I'm a little freaked out that you're not freaked out. Does my thing freak you out? Is your thing still a thing? What do you mean? My thing didn't change your mind about your thing. 
David smiles softly and gives Julia a peck on the cheek. She bolts up in surprise. As David opens his eyes, he sees that Julia is tensed up nervously, with her eyes shut tightly. I'm, I'm sorry, I... He tries to back away, but without changing expression, Julia suddenly grabs his face and pulls it in for another kiss. She loosens up. It becomes a real kiss. She sweeps him off his feet. David walks home, satisfied and overjoyed. Good night. Julia stands on her porch, frazzled and disheveled. Okay, that freaked me out. Both secrets are out. David's in love, and Julia is a werewolf. Now they've got to figure out how to navigate love and lycanthropy. It's another day at work. But David isn't thinking about spreadsheets and quality analytics. No, he's sitting with a big, dumb, satisfied grin on his face. He just had his first kiss with the woman he loves. His co-workers notice. What did you do? Julia stands, nervous and frazzled, in the middle of the sidewalk, talking to herself as the dogs look at her in confusion. <sighs> what did I do? For David, this is a day of celebration. He smiles coyly as Caleb gives him an encouraging noogie. Look at you, you dog, you! Julia is spending the day worrying that she made a mistake. She doesn't like the way Bijou is eyeing her in the park. Don't look at me like that, dog. Caleb and Subu are both proud of their boy for finally ripping off that band-aid and telling Julia how he feels. I couldn't just leave things be. <laughs> Julia's not so sure telling David her secret was such a good idea. Why couldn't I just leave things be? At the end of the workday, David is still thrilled. I, I can't believe I did that! But alone in her apartment, Julia is less enthused. I cannot believe I did that. So the next day, Julia shows up at David's apartment with the four words that no one wants to hear. We need to talk. You mean about my thing or your thing? Well, my thing and your thing are kind of a thing. Look, you're a really nice guy and I really do like hanging out with you. But this whole thing- oh, Sorry, can we stop talking about things? I can't keep track. I told you I'm a, a werewolf. Thank you. What does that even mean? It means that every time there's a fool- No, no, I know what it means. I mean, what does it- What does it mean? Julia shushes David with her finger and pulls him inside, shutting the door behind them. Biju tries to follow them, but gets trapped outside. Inside the stairwell, Julia gets serious. It means I've never been in a relationship that lasted longer than a lunar month. That I'm not safe to be around. That it's not safe for me to get close to anyone. It, it means that I don't have any friends, that I can't have any boyfriends. As they talk, Bijou repeatedly jumps up and down, scratching at the window, trying to get their attention. You don't scare me. My last relationship ended... Uh, badly? He was a jerk. He was, but that's not why... What happened? He's out of the picture. Well, I'm not going anywhere. I'm sorry, I'm just really freaking out right now. Why? I think I have... emotions? For you? You're not a werewolf right now, are you? No. And you're not a werewolf tonight? No. Then tonight, let me take you out. Okay. Julia smiles. They open the door. Bijou grunts in relief as he can finally join them inside. But just as he steps indoors, David and Julia walk outside hand in hand and close the door again, trapping Bijou inside. In a David sees Caleb and Subu outside his cubicle in the middle of a very intense conversation about 
who knows what. Loop the loops, confetti kabooms, lasers, strobe lights, giant swinging blades, holy shoot, panda launches. What are you guys talking about? Nothing. Are you going out tonight? Yes. Cool. We're meeting at. Oh no no not not with you. Uh, that that sounded bad. I mean, I have plans to go out with someone who is not you. I mean, I. Oh I... baby. Duncan has a hot date. Well, I've got a date, but I don't know if I'd call it a... a I'm guessing at least six makeouts. Well, it's... it's Seven makeouts. So, where are you taking her? Uh, I'm not sure yet. It's our first date, so I really want it. I want it to be really nice. Thai? Well, I've been there. Indian? Already went. Italian? Yesterday. Uh, so, how exactly is this your first date? Well, we were just hanging out before. I've got to make this night more romantic. Escaping the friend zone, huh? Okay, what you want to do is take her somewhere that reminds her of the first time you met. Is that really a night she wants to be reminded of? Subu, harsh. What? Didn't she end up in the hospital? You want to remind her of where it all began. It gets her thinking about your relationship. Shows you've been thinking about your relationship. Gets the sparks flying and then... Oh, you both see how close you've been all along. Make out a clock. Anyway, that's how I bagged Alyssa. Melissa. Was that her name? So, where did you meet this girl? In a darkened, blood-soaked alley. I know a place, but it's only open in October. What happened next? <sighs> she had to squeeze in a car with a couple unruly drunks. Don't let your girl hang out with people like that, Duncan. This sounds like a terrible night. I wouldn't want to remember something like that. Why would you want her to remember that? For me, it was a great night. Because I met her. Also, since when was this my idea? Well, if you have a girl that fondly remembers a night like that, you're going to be together forever. But me, I'd play it safe and drop it. Mediterranean? Not yet. Antarctica? I don't think that's a real thing. There's a nice Mongolian place on. Subu, you don't know how to be romantic. I've been married for eight years. What are your credentials? I swept Alicia off her feet. Melissa, you had one date at the bar. She left when you fell asleep at the table. I had to drive you home. I'll let you guys get back to whatever you were talking about. What were we talking about? We'll have mud pits. Mud pits on the side of the road to let your aggressions and road rage out by doing chewies and donuts. No, seriously. What are you talking about? The date begins. Julia and David walk down the street. Julia looks a lot different. She's wearing a nice dress, high heels, makeup. David has a nice shirt on, but his same old nerdy jacket over it. Okay, I have a couple of options for you. Hold on, I want to duck in here first and get you a new jacket. They walk in front of an old vintage shop. What for? Because I got blood all over yours. Remember, the night we first met? I was just thinking about that night. Me too. They go inside the vintage shop and start browsing jackets. You don't have to buy me a new jacket. You already cleaned the old one. Your jacket is also too small. Oh, okay. And dorky. That wasn't mean, was it? I was trying to tease you. That was a perfectly acceptable level of teasing. I, I'm not very good at teasing. Your jacket is fine. I just think you look better in one like this. Julia points to a very tacky red and white striped suit jacket. Okay, now I really can't tell if you're teasing me or not. Yeah, I, I need practice. Well, you can start by telling me if I need to pretend to like that jacket or not. Let's move on. I could get a red one, then the blood wouldn't show. I would hope that's not going to be an issue again. Has that been an issue before? Well, just like any wild animal, I'll attack if I feel cornered or threatened. But I'm only a wolf one night a month. There are things out there that are wolves every night, and they don't hurt anyone. Unless... What are they called? They're called wolves, David. Oh, right. So everything will be okay. I'm not a bloodthirsty monster, but I'm still a monster. Well, you don't look like a monster to me. You haven't seen me at my worst. Like I said, my last relationship really ended badly. That doesn't mean another relationship won't end better. As I'm sure you can imagine, I haven't had too many. Well, that's okay, I only... I was never popular in high school, and then becoming a werewolf didn't really help matters. The guys in college would disappear after they found out I was a werewolf. 
or I'd disappear when I'd find out that's why they weren't interested. Ugh, you had furries hitting on you, didn't you? I never even went out on a second date until after college, and then I figured out it couldn't be done. Well, you picked the wrong guy. He was terrible for me. He didn't even like dogs. Was that a problem? He used to kick dogs when they got too close to him. So that's why you're not together anymore. That's what I'm guessing happened. Can we not talk about my ex or lycanthropy for a bit? How about this one? David points to a woolly winter jumper with fuzzy reindeer. I really hope this is part of my joke detection training. They move their date to a tea house and sit next to the window, both with their new coats. They're enjoying the conversation so much that neither seems to notice that they're right across the street from the frightening alley where they first met. They swap stories. The worst thing you've ever done. The worst thing I've ever done? Hmm. Well, my mom said that when I first started talking, I used to tell store employees I was lost just because I liked hearing my name over the intercom. (laughs) Oh, what a little kitty. It's telling that you chose a story from when you were so young. You're leaving out your entire remembered life. That means you either have a dark and sordid past that you're hiding from me, or that you don't have any other stories to tell me because you're a nerd. If I don't tell you which, will it make me seem mysterious? You said you're a quality analyst, right? Ooh, you got me. Okay, the scariest thing you've ever done. Oh. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, that... That was a dumb question. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. I'll tell you the second scariest. It was at summer camp. It was after lights out, and I snuck out of my cabin in my little footy pajamas. Where were you going? To the boys' cabin. There was a boy named Rick Rogers that I had a huge crush on. I was eight, and he was ten. But he was the only boy in camp that didn't make fun of me. Was he your boyfriend? (sighs) Oh, no. I'd never talked to him, but I'd written him a little love note. I was so scared that I'd get caught delivering it that I turned off my flashlight and had to tiptoe through the woods in the dark. I couldn't see or hear anything until that twig snapped behind me. Was it? It was Ricky and all of the boys in his cabin. He grabbed the note and ran away laughing, and the next day he showed it to everyone in camp. Is that it? Is that it? I was humiliated. (laughs) Well, well, sorry, when you started talking about sneaking in the woods at night, I thought it was going to be the story of how you got bitten by... That was 11 years later. Same camp. As a counselor looking for another little girl that had wandered out. That was your scariest moment? No, it was showing up here. Tonight. The day after his first date with Julia, David sits in his cubicle, happily trying to focus on work. But Caleb, who's heard so much about Julia, wants to know more. He still doesn't even know Julia's biggest secret, that she's a werewolf. So, when do we get to meet her? You did meet her. Drunk meets don't count! (sighs) Someday. Let's all meet at the bar tonight. I thought you said drunk meets don't count. If you get drunk together, it counts extra. Well, I don't think she's ready for that just yet. Dad Nugget Duncan, I thought you sealed this deal. Well, she's just kind of a loner. Social anxiety? Just shy. Abandonment issues? No, just... Agoraphobic? No, stop trying to psychoanalyze someone you've never met. I've met her! Drunk meets don't count. Alcoholic? No, she's... A... She's a werewolf. What? I know, it's... David! Look, I... David! It's not... How could you? I love her. Not tell me. Um. David, you are the coolest dude I know. Holy shoot. Subu. No, don't tell him. Subu peeks his head over the cubicle wall. What? What? Is Subu not invited? Of course Subu's invited. I I meant... Subu, put on your party pants because I think we are hitting the pub tonight with David and his lady friend. Fine. What? Since when were you invited? There's more to it, but I can't explain. I don't see that it requires an explanation. David, you owe him an explanation. What? I didn't even... Can I do my CSATs now? She's a werewolf. What? 
Yes. No. Yes. No. I know. You guys can't say anything. crescent moon, waxing. This means it's just under halfway through the lunar cycle. Inside a booth at the local bar, Julia sits awkwardly on one side while Caleb leans in uncomfortably close with a huge grin on his face. He's wearing a werewolf-themed t-shirt. Subo, on the other hand, is as far on the other side of the booth as he can possibly get, frozen in fear. David arrives back at the table, holding three beers and a fruity pink punch bowl drink. <sighs> You told them, didn't you? Caleb opens his mouth to ask a question, but Julia already knows every question he's going to ask. Yes, it's true. Holy shoot! I knew it! Do you remember? No, I don't remember anything. What do you do? Usually, I just roam around my apartment, eat all the food, and pee on the floor. How do you know if you... Because all the food is gone and there's pee on the floor. Caleb, beer. Subu awkwardly sips his fruity pink drink while everyone else enjoys their beer. I'm not going to eat you, Subu. Subu, don't be racist against werewolves. Don't take it personally. He's afraid of Caleb, too. We've had some good times here. Remember when you picked me up from that awful date with Felicity? Not even close that time. It was Melissa. And you said she was an angel fallen from heaven. You know who else was an angel fallen from heaven? The devil. Sorry, Julia, I didn't mean to tell him. I just... I'm not going to freak out. When a girl tells you she's not going to freak out, it means she's already freaking out. Caleb! I've got to help him out with these things because he's only had one girlfriend. Caleb! Wait, you mean your love life is even more pitiful than mine? (laughs) Well, I... I'm cursed. What's your excuse? Hey, does it ever bother you that you can't celebrate Jungwell Deborum? Do you want to dance? I can't dance. It's a Korean holiday where you dance during the full moon. Well, I can't either, but I do. I don't. I don't celebrate myself, but I do like knowing that the option is there. Okay, I'm leaving you alone with Caleb then. David walks away to the dance floor. Julia realizes that if she doesn't follow him, she'll be left alone with Caleb. She decides to bite the bullet and follow him. Caleb turns his attention to Subu, who has just finished downing his drink. I'm not dancing with you. Julia and David dance. Very badly. I like your friends. Really? I'm not even sure if I like my friends. You guys seem close. Well, you know, they're work friends. None of my friends will talk to me. I had to move. Yeah, I like my friends. Subu is fast asleep at the table. Caleb calls over a waitress for more drinks. Miss, can you put less alcohol in his next raspberry lemonade? He's kind of a lightweight. This is just a lemonade. There's no alcohol in it. So, seriously? What? I just get tired after 9 o'clock. Once their drinks arrive, Caleb and Subu saddle up at the bar. Man, don't you wish you could find a cool chica like that? I'm married. Since when are you married? Since eight years ago. Why didn't you tell me? I thought you were my friend. You've met her, and technically, I'm your boss. Since when are you my boss? All four leave the bar. David tries to corral Caleb while Julia helps sleepy Subu walk. All right, guys, we can do this. One more fire! Can you watch these guys for a second? My car is back by my apartment. If you all live downtown, why do you need a car? Because I don't typically feel like carrying both of these guys home. We can do it. I'll take the light one. Together, they walk into the suburb streets and stop at the intersection near Caleb and Subu's respective houses. Good night, you guys. Good night, everybody. Good night, Subu. Subu stumbles aimlessly in the general direction of his home, but Caleb does not follow. Your house is down there, too, Caleb. What? We're not calling it a night already, are we? I thought we were just getting Grandpa there tucked into bed so the cool people can party. Everything is closed. We don't need anything as long as we have friendship 
and intoxication. I'm your friend too? Are you kidding? You know how much street cred you get for being friends with a werewolf? Okay, good night, Caleb. Seven. Seven street creds. Good night, guys. Good night! Good night, friends. Sumo! Quit sleeping on your neighbor's lawn! I'm just resting my eyes. And I was her friend first. Well, David was, but I'm friend of a friend, and you're a friend of a friend of a friend. Everybody's friends with everybody, all right? I like that. All right then, party poopers. I guess it's just the two of... Oh. 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 Realizing that he's the third wheel, Caleb finally takes the hint and scurries away. Subu wakes up from the lawn he'd fallen asleep in and starts heading in the right direction as well. Well, that's that. I've still got to make sure you get home safe. I'm the most dangerous thing on these streets. That's why I've got to keep my eye on you. Do you want to see my apartment? Inside Julie's apartment, the two lovebirds stare lovingly into one another's eyes. They both lean their legs in so that their knees are touching. Then their feet. Six long days with you, dear Alone in the world I spent six nights with you Dodging my kisses Was alone in the dark And there's something that you're hiding from me Something you won't tell And as I lie here in our hotel room You turn away from me I'm still Julia lays her head against David's chest They hug in my Everything is temporary, including you. So be wise and take my advice. Hold on while it lasts. I don't need you, but I want you. If only for tonight. Hold on to me. Hold on to me. Hold on tight. Hold on to me. Hold on. David gently kisses Julia on the forehead. She smiles. Suddenly she pounces like a wolf, pinning him to the sofa. Waiting to wake from a sleepless dream. Uneasy and torn. She can from pain alone, all alone. Even with you by my side. I don't need you, but I want you. If only for tonight. Hold on. As Julia kisses David on the neck, he suddenly freezes in fear. You don't have to worry about being bitten, unless I've actually turned into a wolf. Oh, sorry. They kiss. So be wise and take my advice. Hold on while it lasts. Everything has changed. To mark the moment, the next day at work, David takes the most important step yet. Opening up his social media page, he clicks Edit Profile. Under Relationship Status, he dramatically scrolls down to In a Relationship. He clicks. Now it's official. Now. Things are going to get real. Inside the office, the tables have turned. Now David is the one who's bright and chipper, while Caleb shuffles in looking hungover and half dead. He's wearing the same clothes as the night before, turned inside out. Good morning, Caleb. You're late, Caleb. Hey, 
Did you know that Subaru is our boss? Of course I did. Since when? He's always been our boss. But I trained him. Yeah, and he thought that was pretty condescending. David meets Julia for lunch. This is a huge relief to the old man in the next booth. With her newfound confidence in social situations, Julia has been talking his ear off. So then I asked her if she liked music. And do you know what she said? She said yes. I didn't know it could be so easy to make friends. Hi, Julia. I... Oh, hi, sweetie. This is my boyfriend, David. David, this is my new friend, Wilton. How are you, Pumpkin? So great. I made so many new friends today. While Julia is distracted, making goo-goo eyes at David, the old man quickly gets up and moves to another booth further away. I even joined a local artist group, so I can start painting again. You paint? I used to, but I guess I gave up a lot of things in the last few years. What did you do today? Uh, reordered database columns with Caleb and Subu, and thought about you. Oh, how sweet. David and Julia stare at one another with gooey-eyed, sappy grins on their faces. The old man is grossed out by this. He moves to another booth, even further away. While David was at lunch, Caleb and Subu have been gossiping about how he's been acting. Yeah, they're totally in that stage of the relationship. I know. No, seriously. He's been saying it all morning. How much you want to bet? Five times a minute. I'm willing to bet you're not going to get any work done today, are you? Ten bucks. He's going to get back from lunch any minute now. Get ready. Shh, 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 shh. Oh, hey, David. How are you? Um, good. Just got back from lunch with my girlfriend. Oh, really? That's wonderful, isn't it, Subu? Yeah. My girlfriend is great, isn't she? I think so, too. You mean Julia? That girl I met and therefore require no further title to specify who she is? Yes, Julia. I only have one girlfriend. Well, the three of us all know that, obviously. So you're at that stage, huh? What, the stage where I call her my girlfriend? Yes! We're so happy for you. Am I doing it too much? Are you trying to get me to say it? Are you counting how many times I say it? Are you betting on this? Five, four... Three, two... What word would you use to describe Julia Hobson? Awesome. One. Pay Subu. Ten bucks, sucker. It's a quarter moon. David and Julia walk together through downtown Royal Oak in the early evening. Julia has lost the goofy, love-struck grin she's had for the past few days and looks concerned. David remains unfazed. One week. You feel weak? Do you need something to eat? I was talking about the moon. What, is it full? Not yet. That's a uh, half moon, right? So you're halfway there? Quarter moon. I'm three quarters of the way there. That's confusing. That's terrifying. Wait, I get it. The other two quarters are in the back. They walk past the alley where David first found Julia. She's terrified. But David doesn't even notice. I can't believe it's been three weeks already. I thought we already had a quarter moon. There are two quarter moons. First quarter and last quarter. Oh, so this is last quarter. No. Last quarter comes first. First quarter comes last. That's confusing. So there's a full moon, a quarter moon, croissant moon, crescent moon, then there's no moon, new, wait for the light. What am I missing? Gibbous, waxing, and waning. What's a blue moon? When there's two full moons in a month. That happens? Once in a blue moon. The next day, David and Julia are at the dog park with the dogs. They're back to sitting on opposite sides of the bench. Biju is still playing with the ball that Julia got him, trying to work out how to get the dog cookie out. David looks at Julia doe-eyed and smiling. Julia looks worried. She sees one of her client's dogs, 
lovingly cuddle up to another pup across the park. She smiles. It gives her a tiny bit of hope that love can survive animal instincts. Until the dogs start fighting. Julia's discouraged. She decides it's time to start training David. She'll start by teaching him how to bond with his own dog. If you're going to hang around me, you need to learn how to deal with wild animals. That's a domesticated animal. Baby steps. Now, pet him. David reaches out to pet Biju. Biju jumps up in startled surprise and drops his ball. No, 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 no. If you reach out suddenly like that, he'll see it as a threat gesture. Let him smell your hand first. David gently offers his hand to Biju. Biju slaps it away in disgust. Animals just don't like me. Biju has had enough of this and chases after his ball. It has landed in front of a much bigger, much angrier dog. I'll go get him. No, wait. David jumps up to get Biju. Don't get between two dogs when... Julia watches in wordless terror as David learns why you should never get in between two fighting dogs. The ball rolls away. Biju chases it, leaving David to get mauled. They're back in the same emergency room as the first time they met. Hmm. But this time, it's David whose clothes are torn and whose face is bloodied. We spend a lot of time together in hospital waiting rooms. I guess it's inevitable that if we spend time together, one of us is going to get hurt. Julia starts to cry. Oh, no, I, I, was, I was just joking. It's okay. I'm sorry, David. It's not your fault. You, you can't control what some animal does. That's never as comforting as people think. The doctor is back. What happened this time? We were walking the dog and... You're dangerous, lady. <sighs> David and Julia have returned to their usual window seat at the tea house. David has to sit awkwardly because he's all bandaged up. Be careful. Use a pillow. I'm okay. Don't worry. We'll stop by the pharmacy on the way out and get you something for the pain. I need to get my prescription anyways. Your prescription? I'll take a sleep aid and go to bed early during the full moon. And that keeps you out for the night? Well... No, enough medicine to knock out a wolf is way too much for a person. But it does help me sleep through the transformation. Last month, I realized at the last minute that I had to run out and tried to rush to the pharmacy and back before nightfall. I didn't make it. Is that when I found you? Yeah. Well, as long as you know not to take any more unnecessary chances. Yeah. Is there anything I can do to help? No. I think I have to do this on my own. Julia looks out the window at the alley where David first found her. She wonders what happened that night. If anyone was hurt. What are you looking at? Nothing. Let's go. They leave, passing the alley. Julia runs past it. David is clueless. They're in the video store, browsing for something obscure to watch. What do you feel like? Scared. You want something scary? What? No, I have enough horror in my life. How about a nice comedy? I know you just want to make me happy, but I've seen how this ends. And you aren't going to like it. This looks like fun. I'm trying to be serious. Are you looking for something more serious? No. I don't think I can handle a lot of drama right now. How about a little romance? Not tonight. They walk past the clerk on their way out of the store. I can ring up your videos over here. Looks like I'm not getting any. Julia is at home alone. She doesn't even feel like getting out of bed today. She's having a lot of conflicting emotions, so she picks up the phone and calls someone she hasn't spoken to in a long, long time. Hey, Mom. It's your daughter? I didn't ask you to bail me out of anything, Mom. I, I never have. Not even... I live in Michigan now. I'm doing great, actually. I have my own business. I have friends. I even... I, I met someone. Mom, don't start. You know I had no control over what happened last time. It's different this time, Mom. Mom, I... I'm in love. 
Mom? Hello? Julia's mom is hung up. Now she's all alone with her thoughts and the memories of all the relationships that have ended in tragedy in the past. It's a waxing gibbous moon. You may not know what that means, but Julia sure does. And it's not good. That means that the moon is almost full. It's nearly the time when she cannot help but hurt the people she loves the most. There's a knock on the door. He's under the mat. David comes in. Hey, are you going out tonight? No. He finds Julia lying on the sofa, still in her pajamas with a pillow over her face. Is there something you want to talk about? No. Do you want to meet my parents? <sighs> no. They invited us over this Thursday. Thursday? Thursday. Julia sits up quickly, the pillow falling into her lap. Thursday? What's wrong with Thursday? You want me to meet your parents this Thursday? Oh. Is it that time of the month? She angrily throws the pillow at David. Oh, no, I, I didn't mean... I, I meant lunar month. The lunar calendar. Is it... She slumps back down into the sofa. The full moon. Thursday? Thursday. Friday, then? Oh, that's much better. She buries her face into the pillow again. David's clueless optimism is not what she needs to hear right now. Everything will be... What does that even mean? It means that I don't care. Maybe you should try caring about something for once. That's not what I meant to say either. I mean, it won't change. Change what? You don't even know me. How can you say I don't know you? How can you keep saying everything will be okay? Because everything will be okay. She chucks the pillow at David's face before he can finish that sentence. Do you want me to go? Yes. David leaves. Keys under the mat. Julia goes back to lying alone. She knows that the only way to keep from hurting David is to push him away, but that makes her hurt even more. Don't tell me nothing that I want to hear. Just take me home and make it crystal clear what you want. Cause I've been holding it down. Wait a minute. David walks home completely alone. You gotta get me like a little thing Some kind of loving or the final sting So I know If we are coming along Julia too walks across town without another soul in sight David eats at he and Julia's favorite brunch place, sitting across from an empty chair. At the same time, Julia sits alone in the city square, stress eating fast food out of a bag. It's the morning of the full moon. David shows up at Julia's apartment and calls her from outside the door. Hey Julia, can I come up? Are you kidding me? Julia's at home, in bed in the same pajamas as before. I know it's Thursday, but it's not dark yet. I just haven't seen you in two days. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to come over and tell me everything will be okay, but then it won't be okay. You'll stick around too long, and when I change, you'll underestimate the danger of the situation. You'll try to placate me, and I'll start acting like a wild, frightened animal. 
You're going to try and talk your way out of it and appeal to the part of me that's still me, which, by the way, isn't there. But I'm going to perk up my ears and listen, just like any animal that doesn't understand what you're saying. But you're going to mistake this for recognition. Get too close and get mauled. Then I'm going to have to spend the rest of my life feeling guilty about it. I just know that it's a stressful night, and you don't have to be alone. You have no idea what kind of night it is, or else you really wouldn't want to be with me right now. I'll always be here for you. Don't you have friends to go hang out with? Go be there for them for a while. Julia hangs up and rolls over in bed. She knows she's just pushed David away, but at least he won't be around for the full moon, and he won't get hurt. Unless, of course, he does something really, really stupid. If you love me, then you treat me right. If you don't, then shoot me down tonight. But I'll still watch my phone case, you change your mind. If you won't choose, baby, choose. It's the evening of the full moon. David, Caleb, and Subu are back out at the bar for after work drinks. It's an emergency boys night, supporting David who feels rejected by Julia. Each of his coworkers offers their advice on how to handle the situation. Subu has a lot of very good advice. Caleb has a lot of very loud advice. Ugh, she won't even talk to me. Just give her the space she asked for. Another beer for my buddy here? He just got dumped. I didn't get dumped, she's just scared. I know you're at a stage where even a day apart feels like... She's pushing you away before you can leave. How can I prove I'm not going anywhere? By listening. By being there for her. She doesn't want me there. She will if you respect her wishes. She doesn't want to hurt you, but she's convinced it's inevitable. So she's decided to get it over with. I do that to girls all the time. You know, it is entirely possible that she just needs some time alone. No, I mean... She's scared that she'll literally hurt someone, like with biting. I do not like where this conversation is going. If she's scared, you have to be strong. Why doesn't she lock herself up during the full moon? She locks herself in her apartment, but I guess that isn't enough. I can see the wheels turning, concocting a ridiculous plan that you know isn't going to work out well for anyone. You're going to try and drag both of us into it. How about a leash? Well, that's not going to hold a werewolf, is it? I'm not going to let you get me all caught up in your madcap plan. I won't do it. I won't be that guy. Handcuffs? Wouldn't that hurt? Yeah, I'm going to go. You know my number. It's my turn to drive to the hospital, so feel free to call. Subu leaves. The other two are so wrapped up in their terrible plan that they don't even notice. Not if you get soft handcuffs. Where can you get soft handcuffs? Caleb walks out of a store called Fun and Fantasy, holding a pair of fuzzy pink handcuffs. Okay. You go in, and we'll guard the door. They stand outside of Julia's apartment. David holds the cuffs. Who's we? What happened to Subu? I think he went home. Caleb looks down and realizes that Biju is there. All right, me and the dog will guard the door. I thought you said these would keep her inside. I want to make one thing clear. While I am accepting ownership of this idea, I never once claimed it was a good one with any likelihood of success. But everything will be okay, right? Sure, why not? David heads up to Julie's apartment. Like she said, the key is under the mat. He slowly creaks open the door and steps inside. Hello? Julia? He peers into her bedroom and finds her fast asleep. Next to the bed is the prescription bottle she mentioned that helps her sleep through the transformation. David gently takes her hand. 
He cuffs her to the bed. There. Now you'll be safe. He slowly backs out of the room and shuts the door so she can sleep. He heads into the kitchen. Now, what do werewolves eat? He opens the fridge and finds it empty. Everything, apparently. On the floor is a big bag of dog food. Ah, there we go. Just then, the clouds part and the full moon appears in the sky. <coughs> David drops the bowl of his on the floor. He walks over to Julia's bedroom and gingerly puts his ear to the door. Julia? Hearing strange noises, he slowly pushes the door open to check on her. David is not quite sure what he expected, but what he sees in the dark is terrifying. He immediately jumps into flight mode and dives away without even thinking to close the door. He jumps into a closet and shuts himself inside just as giant footsteps storm out of the room. He hears razor-sharp claws tap against the floor and heavy breath pour out from between razor-sharp teeth. David shivers in fear. Everything suddenly got real. He did all of this. He betrayed Julia's trust. He invaded her privacy. He ignored all of her wishes and warnings. He has acted so recklessly. And then he does it again. He slowly opens the door to get a quick peek. Out from the crack, he sees a giant gray wolf, bigger than a horse, stalking the living room, wearing Julia's shredded pajamas like a scarf. He slams the door shut knocking a shoebox off the top shelf. It bumps him on the head and spills out a bunch of old papers, photos, and clippings. One photo catches David's eye. It's a picture of Julia, a little younger, longer hair, arm in arm with a big burly man with mutton chops. Your ex? I promise I'll treat you better than this guy did. But there's another piece of paper there. David flips over to the newspaper clipping behind to see what it is. He sees the same photo, a little grainier. Over the headline, Local man killed in freak animal attack. Then, in that moment, David finally puts it all together. She ate him! David screams and runs out of the closet. She ate him, she ate him, she ate him! He tries to make a break for the door, and the surprise wolf suddenly follows. She ate him, she ate him, she ate him. David makes it to the hallway and tries to shut the wolf inside, but its giant paws catch the door before he can shut it. Oh, she ate him! She ate him, she ate him, she ate him, she ate him, she ate him. She ate him, she ate him. Before he can lose a finger, David decides his only hope is to try and outrun the beast. He books it down the blood red stairs, the wolf following closely after. She ate him! David bursts through the ground floor entrance and runs out to warn Caleb. Caleb, she ate him! Oh, hey, David! David runs past Caleb, who doesn't move and doesn't seem to notice anything strange about the situation. The wolf bursts right through the door, right after him. Oh, hey, Julia! The wolf pounces on Caleb and rips his arm from his body. Blood sprays everywhere. The wolf could surely kill him. Until David tries to sneak by to rescue his dog, sees his friend's lifeless arm in the wolf's mouth, and screams. Ah, 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 ah. The wolf drops the arm and runs after David instead. Biju rolls his eyes. He didn't need help. He casually watches the slaughter unfold. David runs down the street, pursued by a massive blood-covered wolf the size of a galloping truck. He calls for help for Caleb on his phone. Hello, 911. We've got a man down near 11 Mile in Curry. What happened? Uh, yeah, no, we're not going there. Uh, no way, man. I know how that goes. Uh, I tell a crazy sounding story, you assume it's a prank call and hang up, and my friend gets left to die. No, not not going there. No, sir. Yeah, just put down that he got shot or something. Yeah, someone shot his arm off. Sure, yeah. Look, I kind of have to go. You're on this, right? As they run through the suburbs, all of Julia's clients' dogs hear the commotion and recognize Julia's scent. Selena, Gibbs, Elmer, and Young Young Tong all run out of their home and join the chase. David is now being pursued by an entire pack. Granted, the Chihuahua is not that much of a threat, but it doesn't make him feel any better. They chase him into the dog park. David heads straight for the bench where he and Julia usually sit. He tries to leap over it, but misjudges the jump and trips. He falls to the ground and tries to hide in the dark. He looks away from the wolf. And then, shot. He feels sharp teeth tear into his leg. Is this it? He's been bitten. By his own dog. Bijou! The wolf hears this and leaps over the bench after him. David runs away with Bijou still latched onto his leg. David runs out of the park, into the busy downtown area. As he passes by the main art theater, the wolf tears through the crowd of people. 
One man gets it away, and the wolf lifts him up in her massive jaws. This gives David enough time to run away to the end of the block. David looks back to see the wolf eviscerating the stranger. He needs to get away, but the light is red. Julia did tell him to watch out for the light. He looks back and sees the wolf is running toward him again. Just as the light turns green, he runs so fast that Biju finally falls off of his leg. The angry, bloody wolf chases him all through downtown, passing all the bakeries and cafes they visit on their dates. The wolf catches up and sinks her jaws in and tears out a massive chunk of his brand new vintage jacket. But David is still okay. He tries to take a shortcut through the bar. But the wolf follows. Patrons run and scream in panic as the chase continues to the back door. Julia's friend Welton scoots as far into his booth as he can to escape the pandemonium and realizes that no booth is far enough away. They burst out the back door and into the alley. David is getting tired, but he has to keep running. The wolf makes one last pounce and pins him to the ground. She sniffs his face. The blood from her jaws drips onto his nose. This looks like it's it. But David decides he is done running. He sits up and puts his hands on the wolf's shoulders. Julia, it's, it's me, David. David stands up and faces the wolf. I know you said you wouldn't recognize me, but somewhere deep down inside, you have to know who I am. She cocks her head to one side. David steps slowly backward without breaking eye contact. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. I'm sorry I hurt you and scared you. I screwed up. Sometimes people have emotions they can't control. I hope you of all people can understand that. The wolf is startled by this act of confidence. She folds her ears back and puts her head down. I know why you're mad. Instead of listening to what was bothering you, I just kept telling you it would be okay, but that's not necessarily true. Bad things do happen. Bad things happen to you. And to people you, you love, things are not always okay. What I meant was that even if things aren't okay, that's okay. I love you for better or worse, Julia. Things will go wrong, and I may not know how to handle these things yet. But I have a lifetime to figure it out. I'd like that lifetime to last longer than tonight. But no matter how long it lasts, I'd like to spend it with you. David holds his arm out for the wolf to sniff, just like Julia taught him. This startles the wolf. It swipes at David with his giant razor sharp claws and tears his stomach open. David is in a lot of pain, but still alive. He runs away past the dumpster where he first met Julia. He ducks under the open rusted door. The wolf, just like last month, flips the door and yelps in pain. David is still worried about the woman he loves, even if she's turned into a wolf, and runs back to see if she's okay. Julia, are, are you- The wolf is not finished trying to eat him, and he has to jump into the dumpster to escape. The wolf can't fit inside, but tries tearing through the trash to get to him. Until it gets tired, it curls up under the dumpster door and goes to sleep. It's morning. The sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and the alley looks far less threatening. Curled up, covered in blood, fast asleep under the dumpster, is Julia, her shredded pajamas covering her like a blanket. She suddenly wakes up with no idea how she got there. Who, uh, what happened? David pops his head out of the dumpster, covered in blood and garbage. Oh, hey Julia. Oh my god, David, are you okay? Uh, I'm fine. Take my jacket. Climbs out, takes off his torn, bloody jacket, revealing three deep claw marks torn out of his chest and stomach. What is that? Oh, don't worry. Those are just claw marks. Um, I didn't get bit. Julia looks at David with loving concern. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. The concern leaves her face as she gives him a much-deserved punch. What did you do? Ow! David doubles over in pain. Oh, jeez. You really are hurt, aren't you? Let's get you to the hospital. Maybe just a stitch or two. The two walk away, leaving a trail of questions and blood. Uh, we should go check on Caleb anyway. What happened to Caleb? Don't worry, he texted me. He'll be fine. Okay. He is missing an arm, though. What? Hey, are we still on for that thing at my parents' house tonight? What? It's Friday. You still want me to meet your parents? I almost murdered you. Well, I realized that... 
I did a little speech about this. I, I guess you don't remember it. What was the speech? Oh, shoot, now I can't remember it either. Back in the emergency room, Subu is now on clipboard duty. David is sitting dazed and torn apart. Julia has shredded clothes and a face covered in blood. Caleb is missing an arm. The doctor is not sure what to make of all of this. Remind me never to hire a dog walker. Fiju, on the other hand, he's still in the dog park. He may have never figured out how to solve the cookie and the ball puzzle that Julie got him, but he's got something even better. He took Caleb's arm. Are you sure you want to do this? We don't have to do this. I think you're more nervous about this than I am. You act like your parents are gonna hate me. No, no, it's just... It's just that they're really traditional and I hope they don't freak out. I'm used to freaking people out. I can handle freaking people out. As long as you're not freaked out. Never. Mm. <coughs> oh. <coughs> uh. <clears throat> Mom? Dad? This is Julia. Ah, yes. Her. <laughs> Hello, dear. David told us he was springing you. <laughs> Herb will take you to the garage to put your coat. <sighs> we don't want the dogs to smell it. <clears throat> Are you sure you can't get it from kissing? God, Mom, we talked about this. It's not a full moon. Okay, everyone into the dining room. <laughs> I made a roast beef, dear. I didn't know if you eat your meat raw or not, so I left some uncooked. <laughs> Cooked is fine, Mrs. Duncan. Mm. Mm. You know, Mom, Julia has a bachelor's degree in graphic design, and sure. next year... Well, tell me, dear, just how does one become a werewolf? Mom! It's okay, Dave. I was working at a summer camp. I heard a noise. I went out to investigate, and I just got bit. Our David has never been bitten by a werewolf. Mom! That we know of. Dad! That reminds me of how David and I met. Does it ever bother you, being a werewolf? Not really. It only happens during full moons, and I don't remember anything after. The rest of the time, I'm just a normal person. I thought you said you were an arts major. Oops! Oh, just leave it! Dear, huh? David and I will go to the kitchen and get something to clean that up with. Won't we, David? Mom, please. Oh, her reign of destruction begins. It was a glass! My best glass! You're the one who begged me to introduce you. That's when I thought she might give me grandchildren, not puppies. Son, I just wanted to make sure you were carrying protection. Dad. It's a silver bullet. Dad. Look, you guys have to treat Julia with respect. She's a human being most of the time. Oh, I just don't know why you couldn't find a nice, normal girl. You better get used to her, Mom. I'm going to ask her to marry me. Uh, what did she break now? I think she heard us. Oh, shoot. She has super wolf hearing, doesn't she? Oh. I'm sitting on the other side of the door. Uh, so, uh, so you, uh, heard that, huh? Yeah, yes! Oh, jeez, I, I was... I was gonna do this right. I was I was gonna get a ring. You remember the the one that the, the one that you uh Yes! Well I, I was hoping to I, Ask the stupid question. Uh will, will, will you marry me? Yes! Huh. Well, I guess she'll be back for Christmas. <laughs> do werewolves celebrate Christmas? Uh I think just Halloween. <laughs>